Welcome to P40 Agile Enhanced 104 Protection Training Module. In this module, we'll cover the following protection elements of P14D Enhanced so that the elements of P14N and 94V can all be covered. The elements are phase overcurrent elements, including phase TOC, IOC, directional overcurrent, earth fault overcurrent elements including EF1, EF2, TOC, IOC, directional overcurrent, and restricted earth fault or restricted ground fault. Switch on to fault SOTF. Negative sequence overcurrent elements including IOC, TOC, directional overcurrent, plus broken conductor. Undercurrent element, thermal overload, under voltage elements including phase and positive sequence under voltage, over voltage elements including phase over voltage, residual over voltage, measured or the derived, and positive and negative sequence over voltage. Power element including over power and under power. Frequency elements including under frequency, over frequency and frequency rate of change. And finally, we're going to recap what we have learned in this module. So let's get started. Phase current faults are the faults where fault current flow between two or more phases of a power system. The fault current may be between the phase conductors only or between two or more phase conductors and earth. The phase overcurrent elements in this session will cover 50 phase ILC, 51 phase TOC, and 67 phase directional overcurrent. They all have the phase CT at the input of each element. We'll use phase IOC as the example to introduce the common settings and its logic diagram. Now we're going to open the settings to check the protection elements. Before that, uh, under the profile, we have selected the device language to English UK. Um, for the most demo, we're using the UK English, but the US English parameters screenshot will be also be displayed. So click the settings tab we can open the protection summary first. Under the protection summary, we can see that the all the elements enabled, like a phase TOC and IOC, and also the relay being used from the R2 to R12. And we can use this uh, allow column filter checkbox to apply this uh, filter functions. And this filter function can be disabled if you click uh, the show filters, and that uh, checkbox is disabled. So under the view column, we can see that the shortcut we can quickly access to the setting parameters for the each settings. So here we enter the TOC, but later we're going to use the face IOC to introduce the common settings of other parameters. On the left side of this set points, there's another filter. We can use this filter to uh, find the element. So for example, we can just search start with face And second condition includes contains IOC and I click this filter. So now we can see that only the face IOC element displayed from the four different groups. Now let's open the face IOC element. The first setting is the function. 
there are four options including disable will be five options uh, trip alarm latched alarm and configurable if the function is set to trip then when this element operate the output relay one will operate the trip led on the front panel is lit the face IOC start and operate uh, target will turn on. When the alarm function is selected and the feature operates, the LED alarm will flash from the front panel and it self resets when the operating condition is cleared. When latched alarm function is selected and the feature operates, the LED alarm will flash during the operating condition and will be steady lit after the condition are cleared. The LED alarm can be reset by issues reset command or pressing the C key from the front panel. Last, not least, when the configurable function is selected, neither the trip output nor the alarm LED will turn on automatically. They need to be configured in the PSL editor with the flex logic operands. The inputs can be chosen by Feather or RMS. That means you're using the fundamental Feather magnitude or the total we form RMS magnitude. When RMS option is chosen, the P40 RGL enhanced IED can operate reliably during the severe CT saturation condition. The current set or the threshold in the US English is used to select the pickup level of the operation current above which the element will operate. The directional can be set to non-directional for word or reverse. It works with the 67 directional overcurrent element. The time delay or the pickup delay in the US English provide fixed time interval to delay an operation. Then the R reset or dropout Delay in US English provide delays for dropping out the closed contact. Inhibit or block in the US English provide this uh, list of the flex logic operands and which can inhibit the operation of the element. If this inhibit is set to on, that means this function is permanently disabled. From the relay output 2 to 12, that used to select the output relays required to operate when the function operated under trip alarm, latched alarm, and configurable four options. Among this uh, relay list, we see that the relay eight is not available because that's the watchdog fail safe relay. The logic diagram provides a complete comprehensive sequential illustration how each set point, input parameter and internal logic is used in a feature to obtain an output operands. For the complete logic diagram, please refer to the instruction menu and here we're going to use a simplified logic diagram of the phase IOC a phase current to explain how it works. So the first is the set point is function. It has four options. We have introduced this before. And then the input is current IA coming from the phase ACT. It compares with the current set or the threshold in the US English to determine if this element operate. And this processing time is eight times every cycle to determine if a pickup has occurred. 
then the next it compares with the 67 directional element with its setting to determine if the function should be blocked. If the directional is set to non-directional or the really operated within the preset direction, then it checks if there is any settings in the inhibit asserted. If there is an inhibit operand asserted, and uh, after this inverter, before this AND gate, the logic becomes zero, so this function will be blocked. Otherwise, this pickup operand or start will be asserted for the uh, UK English is PIOC I greater than one start and the US English is PIOC one start A. After the DT definite time delay timer or the pickup delay in the US English, the operand will the trip operand um, PLC I greater than one, trip A for the UK English or the PLC one trip A for the US English, this will operate. And meanwhile, if the other auxiliary relays from two uh, to 12 being preset, this will also operate. When the input uh, current IA is below the current set threshold, then after this uh, reset delay, the start operand will drop out. So this simplified diagram does not show the phase B and C and other uh, stages. The three phase operands A, B, C will go through an OR gate to generate a general start operand P, I, O, C, I greater than one start or P, I, O, C one start in US English. And also the general chip operand is also generated the same way P, I, O, C, I greater than one trip in UK English or P, I, O, C, I trip in US English. So other stages follow the same principle. The only the operand index number is changed from PLC I greater than one into two and three and four and the US English PLC one, two, three, four, so far so on. Now let's look the phase TOC setting parameters. The main difference with phase ILC is that the time overcurrent element can provide IDMT inverse definite minimum time instead of only the definite time delay in the IOC. Other common settings like function, input, directional, inhibit are the same. So the only difference is the time delay method. So the, the curve have a pull down list of 28 options, including the four user curves we introduced in the previous 103 module. If we choose the first one, definite time delay, DT, and we can see that the setting has the time delay. That's the same like the phase IOC element. If this curve choose set to IEC, we can see that time delay turned into the TMS. The TMS uh, time dial is only used for the IEC curve and SI curve. Then the key factor is used when you set to the RI curve. So when the curve is set RI, this TMS turned into a K factor. For the rest of the curve, 
for example, the I triple E, the US curve and NC curve, the TMS changed into the time dial. So all this the TMS or the time dial is just a multiplier set point allowing shifting of the selected uh, base curve in the vertical uh, direction. And there are uh, two ways of uh, the reset, uh, DT and the inverse. This is intended for coordination with the digital and electromechanical relays. If the DT uh, reset is selected, the phase TOC element will reset after the time delay provided by this uh, T reset time. If the inverse uh, reset characteristic is uh, selected, then the time to reset is calculated based on the reset equations for the selected inverse curve. And for the equations of the inverse curve or the reset curve, please refer to the instruction manual. The pickup levels of the phase uh, TOC can be adjusted in two, two directions. One is raised through the code load pickup, which we'll cover in the 105 control and monitor modules. Another one is reduced by voltage dependent element, uh, VDEPOC. And we have uh, two options here. There is VCO and VRO, voltage controlled operation and voltage restrained operation. In the VCO mode, the under voltage detector is used to produce a step change in the current setting when the terminal voltage is less than V, less than one, then the pickup will be reduced by a key factor. For example, 0 0.8 as a default value. In the VRO mode, the effective operating current of the protection element is continuously variable as applied voltage varies between the two voltage thresholds, V less than one and V less than two. When above V less than one, the pickup is not changed. When below them V less than two, the pickup is a step change as VCO mode. In the example here, we'll set the phase IOC to chip and pickup to one time CT and curves to uh, I triple E extremely inverse. Then the, we set the time uh, multiplier, the time dial for, for two and the reset time to definite reset. Now, when the two times of the pickup current is applied, then the relay will trip in 3.5 seconds. And from the relay front panel, we can see the target message for the phase TOC. In the logic diagram of the phase TOC, we can see these differences with phase IOC is the first current setting is adaptive. If the VDAP overcurrent is enabled, either in the VCO or the VRO mode, then the pickup level will be reduced by the key factor or the calculated slope ratio. The timer delay has both um, IDMT and definite time delay mode. And the reset characteristic can be set to be DT 
like the phase ILC, all are calculated inverse curve. The operand, operands of the phase TOC are P TOC one greater than one start A, that's for the UK English, or P TOC one start A for the US English, for the start and after the time delay, start turned into trip. So the US English operand has no uh, I greater than one sign compared with the UK English. The, this is the, for the logic diagram of the phase A current, but the same principle applies to the phase B and the C and also other stages of this element. Same as the phase ILC, this uh, phase TOC has the general operand PTOC1 start and the PTOC1 uh, trip for the uh, three phase uh, output. And this uh, same for the different stages like a PTOC2, uh, PTOC3, so far, so on. So far, we have seen both phase ILC and the TOC are supervised by directional element if it is enabled. The phase directional element is different with phase ILC and TOC. First, its function has only two options, enable and disable. There's no trip, alarm, config, etc. And second, there's no output operands, and so we'll not introduce its logic diagram here. When the directional element is enabled, it will determine whether the current flow in the each phase is in the forward or reverse direction, as determined by the connection of the selected uh, characteristic angle RCA in UK English or ECA in US English and the voltage and current phasors. The main component of the phase directional element is a phase angle comparator with two inputs. The operating signal, phase current, and the polarizing signal, the line voltage, shifted in the leading direction by the characteristic angle RCA. P40 RGL enhanced use the secure 90 degree or quadrature connection for phase directional polarization. An RCA setting of 90 degree represents a phase current in phase with its phase voltage, which is leading the polarizing voltage by 90 degree. The factory default values for RCA is 30 degree and that's appropriate angle for the inductive fault angle of 60 degree, which is a typical of the voltage range for the distribution feeders. And the setting range is uh, 0 to 350. We can hover the mouse and see the setting range from minimum to the max. The polarizing voltage threshold defines the minimum uh, required voltage for polarizing voltage signal as a valid signal. And this P40RG also has a voltage memory feature. It remembers the measurement of the polarizing voltage three cycles back. From the moment the voltage collapses below the polarizing voltage threshold. And this ensures that either the instantaneous or time delayed directional overcurrent element will be allowed to operate even within the three phase voltage collapse. The voltage memory remains valid for one second after the voltage has collapsed. When voltage memory expired, 
then the reverse memory expire setting will be used to select the required operation. If this setting set to yes, the directional element output is forced to reverse when the voltage memory expires. When this set to no, then the directional element is a forward when the voltage memory expires. Earth faults are overcurrent faults where the fault current flow to Earth. Earth faults are the most common type of fault. In this session, we'll cover the Earth fault elements EF1, IOC, TOC, and directional OC. EF2, IOC, TOC, and directional OC. Sensitic, Earth fault, IOC, TOC, and directional OC. And finally, restricted Earth fault protection. Earth fault 1, EF1, is used for Earth fault current that is measured directly from the system to the ground CT input, B7 and B8. It is also can be measured from residual connection of the three-phase CTs. In the U.S. English, this is called ground over current. Earth fault 2, EF2, uses quantities derived internally from summing the three-phase currents. In the U.S. English, it is called neutral overcurrent. The sensitive earth fault is similar like EF1 using a separate core balance CT, CBCT, connected to the SEF-CT input B7, B8 of the IED with SEF Cortec order code. Restrict Earth fault protection, REF, is a protection mechanism used to protect individual transformer winding sets where neither overcurrent nor percentage differential protection is sufficiently sensitive to detect the fault current. In U.S. English, this is called RGF, Restricted Ground Fault. EF1 IOC in the UK English, all the settings started with IN1 greater than 1. And the setting items are similar like the face IOC. The main difference that is the input is from measured ground current IG and which is wired to the B7, B8 input then it is supervised by the uh, EF1 or this uh, ground fault element. Directional. There's a time uh, delay settings and a reset settings and inhibit. That's the common settings like the face uh, IOC element. Uh, the Inhibit can be selected from any uh, flex logic uh, in this pull down list. In the logic diagram of the EF1, we can see from the comparator the input is measured current IG, ground current, and for the output operands, they are IN1 greater than 1, IOC start or chip for the UK English, then in the US English, they are GND ground IOC 1 start or trip. For EF2 IOC, all the settings start with IN2. The setting items are similar like the EF1 IOC. The main difference is that the current input is not from measured IG ground current, but internally derived I am. This 3I0 is not directly used as input. A small portion of the positive sequence current magnitude is subtracted from the neutral current, informing the operating quantity. So when testing this element with a single phase current injection, the theoretical pickup level becomes 1.066 times CT. 
This supportive sequence restraint key factor allows for more sensitive setting by the count balance spurious zero sequence current resulting from system unbalance under heavy load condition or current transformer transformation errors during the three phase fault. EF2 IOC direction is supervised by the EF2 directional element. The time delay and the T reset are used for the pickup and the drop up delay, and the inhibit is used to block this function. In the logic diagram of the EF2, we can see from the comparator that the input is a neutral current and subtracted by the positive sequence current. And the output operands there, IN2 greater than 1, IOC start or trip for the UK English in the US English, their neutral NTRL, IOC 1 start or trip. SEF, sensitive earth fault or sensitive ground fault in US English, is the same as the EF1. When SEF Cortex order code device is ordered from the menu, we can see that EF1 elements are disappeared and replaced with the SEF elements. For this measured sensitive ground current is connected to the sensitive ground CT input B7, B8 of the device. The other settings from function to inhibit, they are all the same as EF1 IOC. And this uh, principle applies to the sensitive earth fault TOC and uh, SEF directional OC. They are the same settings with the EF1 TOC and EF1 directional OC. EF1 TOC or ground TOC in US English has similar settings as phase TOC. The input is using the measured ground current as the EF IOC and other settings are similar with phase TOC from function to inhibit. The sensitive earth fault TOC has almost the same settings as the EF TOC, just the input is from the sensitive ground CT input, and which it need a special Cortex order code for the relay. In the logic diagram of the EF1 TOC, we can see that the input is measured current IG ground current, and the output operands are the IN1 greater than 1 TOC start and trip in UK English. And for the US English, they are GND uh, ground uh, TOC 1 start or trip. EF2 TOC or neutral TOC in US English has similar settings as EF1 TOC. Uh, the similar inputs from the input of the EF IOC. So that means that all these uh, inputs are internally derived. But that is not uh, totally the same as the IOC. The difference is that uh, this input is purely equals to 3I0 and there's no positive sequence restraint key factor as in the EF IOC. The other settings are the similar with EF2 TOC from function to inhibit. In the logic diagram of the EF2 TOC, we can see the input is the neutral current, and this neutral current is calculated from 3I0, and there's no positive sequence restraint key factor. And for the output, operands there, 
IN2 greater than 1 TOC start and chip for the UK English, then NTRL neutral TOC1 start and chip for the US English. EF1 directional overcurrent function can be set to disable or enabled. The VN polarizing input can be set to calculated V0 or measured VN. The V0 is calculated zero sequence voltage from Fortescue equation and measured VN is from the measured open delta VT. V polarizing set defines the minimum required zero sequence V0 or auxiliary VT uh, Vx used for polarizing supervision voltage. Characteristic angle or forward ECA angle in US English defines element characteristic angle for the forward direction. The reverse direction is the angle set for the forward direction shifted by 180 degree. Forward limit Theta define the symmetrical limit angle for the forward direction. Forward set defines the pickup level for the overcurrent unit of the element in the forward direction. The reverse limit theta angle defines the reverse direction limit angle and also the pickup level. EF2 direction overcurrent polarizing voltage had three modes voltage, current, and dual. These different modes use different comparing phasors as displayed in the table. VN polarizing input can be set to calculated VX or measured VN. Same as the EF1 direction overcurrent. The positive sequence restraint key factor will remove a small portion of the positive sequence current from neutral current as the operation current, same as EF2 IOC element, but this key factor is adjustable. And similarly, like EF1 directional overcurrent, characteristic angle, or the forward ECA angle in US English. This defines element characteristic angle for the forward direction. The reverse direction is the angle set for the forward direction shifted by 180 degree. Forward, forward limit theta angle defines the symmetrical limit angle for the forward direction. And the forward set defines the pickup level for the overcurrent unit of the element in the forward direction. Then the reverse uh, limit theta and the set angle are used to define the reverse direction limit angle and the pickup level. REF or RGF in US English has two types of default, high impedance and low impedance. There's uh, two options under the REF options, high and low Z REF. High impedance REF protection is based on the differential principle. There is a stabilizing resistor used to maintain the stability during the external faults in the presence of saturated line CT. High impedance REF can be used for either delta winding or star winding in both solid grounded and resistance ground system. With high impedance REF, there's no biased characteristic like low impedance REF and the trip threshold is set to a constant level. The advantage of using the high impedance REF is providing a simple proven algorithm which is fast, robust, and secure and is less sensitive to the CT saturation. When the setting is set to the high ZREF, there are four settings, the 
operating current IS setting of the IS can be referred to the instruction menu high impedance session. The time delay is a delay to trip and uh, IN supervising is a ground current supervising current. And once enabled, you need to set a minimum ground supervision current level. And finally, the inhibit of this function used to block. When the setting is set to the low Z ref, then we have more settings. And for this low impedance biased characteristic is used uh, a triple slope biased characteristic in which we can see the corresponding settings uh, K1, K2 are the lower slope and the higher slope. IS1 and IS2 are the first and the second knee point. With the slope one and the first knee point, we can calculate the minimum operating current, and that's a flat area. In other settings like time dire, um, IN supervision, that's the same as the high Z uh, setting. The low impedance REF can be used for either delta winding or the star winding in both solidly ground and the resistance grounded system. Switch on to fault protection SOTF is provided for high speed clearance of any detected fault immediately, following manual closure or closure after a long open time of the circuit breaker. Without SOTF, there is a risk that is the breaker is closed on close in three phase fault. The measured voltage may be too small for the impedance zones or the directional overcurrent stages to operate reliably. The SOTF logic uses breaker status and the command of closing the breaker. The CT input and VT input settings should be configured to match their respective breakers. They should be connected to the line side and not the bus side for detection by voltage and current. SOTF function has the same options with the regular uh, phase IOC TOC element for options. Then the first setting dead Vmax, this setting sets the deadline voltage threshold. Voltage above this setting is not considered for the deadline condition. To be in a deadline condition, all phase must be below this threshold. The second setting line dead I max, this setting defines the deadline current threshold. Current above this setting values are not considered to be in deadline condition. To be in deadline condition, all the phases have to be below this threshold. Line dead T delay, and this is the setting, defines the deadline pickup delay. Once in deadline condition for the current and voltage, the deadline signal will be set after this delay, if conditions are still true. This value should be longer than the longest auto-reclose short time. Voltage max defines the SOTF maximum voltage threshold. Above this setting, the element is not in SOTF condition. To be in the SOTF condition, the same phase for the current and voltage have to be in the SOTF condition. Uh, current set, this defines the SOTF current pickup Threshold below the setting, the element is not in the SOTF condition. To be in the SOTF condition, the same phase for the current and voltage have to be in the SOTF condition. 
and window setting defines the time window where SOTF detection is active after a circuit breaker closure. And external trigger defines the external signal external signal that can also detect the SOTF condition. And the time delay in the US English is a pickup delay defines the potential delay before the trip when SOTF is detected. And finally, inhibit, inhibit is a common setting like other elements. This can be blocked for other test purposes. For example, the primary short circuit injection test. In the negative sequence overcurrent session, we'll introduce all the negative sequence current related overcurrent elements. IOC, TOC, and directional overcurrent, and broken conductor. Negative sequence phase overcurrent elements are more sensitive to resistive phase-to-phase -phase faults, where phase overcurrent elements may not operate. Before we start, let's review the Fortescue equations about the calculation of the symmetrical components of the current. From the equations, we know how the negative sequence current is calculated, but not every element uses a calculated negative sequence current directly as the input. In the next IOC element session, we'll introduce the positive sequence restraint key factor. Negative sequence IOC has the similar settings with phase IOC. All the settings in this element starting with I2 in English setting, and this I2 stands for negative sequence current. And the greater than one for the overcurrent. The function has the four options as the other element. The current set is the pickup levels Similarly, like the neutral IOC, a small portion of the positive sequence current is subtracted from the negative sequence current magnitude when forming the operating current. The difference is this uh, key factor is different with the uh, neutral IOC or the EF2 IOC. So when testing this element with a single phase current injection, then the theoretical pickup level become 3.43 times CT. The positive uh, sequence restraint allows for more sensitive settings by counterbalance spurious negative sequence current resulting from the system on balance under heavy load condition or CT errors during the three phase fault. Negative sequence IOC direction is supervised by the negative sequence directional element. The time delay and the T reset are used for the pickup and the drop out delays and the inhibit is for blocking this function. In the logic diagram of the negative sequence IOC overcurrent, we can see that it's more similar to the EF2 IOC logic diagram. Both have the positive sequence current restraint key factor, and the difference is that for the EF2, the key factor is 1 over 16, that's 6.25%, and for the negative sequence overcurrent key factor is 1 eighth, that's 12.5%. The output operands are I2 greater than 1 IOC start or trip for the UK English NEG SEQ IOC that stands for negative sequence IOC and this uh, is one word no space um, that's the name for the US English, negative sequence IOC 1, start or trip.
and be careful there's no space when you manually type in the this uh, operand in the US English uh, uh, don't uh, make some space uh, within this uh, uh, three words NAC, SIC and IOC. NAC to sequence TOC has uh, similar settings with the uh, face uh, TOC, the main difference is that input is calculated negative sequence current I2 and all the settings are starting with I2. And uh, for the difference with the negative sequence IOC is that in the negative sequence TOC there's no positive sequence restraint key factor. And the negative sequence is just directly calculated from the Fortescue equation and other settings are the similar with the fits, uh, TOC from function to inhibit. In the logic diagram of negative sequence TOC, we can see the input is calculated pure negative sequence current I2 by Fortescue equation. There's no key factor to remove that a small portion of the positive sequence current like negative sequence IOC element. Output operands are I2 greater than 1, TOC start and trip in the UK English and for the US English is one word NEG SEQ TOC 1 start or trip. In the negative sequence directional overcurrent, there is a restraint key factor. That's the positive sequence current restraint factor, like in the EF2 directional overcurrent. And similarly, like the EF2 directional overcurrent, there are characteristic angle or the forward ECA angle in US English defines the element characteristic angle for the forward direction. The reverse direction is the angle set for the forward shifted by 180 degree. Forward limit theta angle defines the symmetrical limit angle for the forward direction. And the forward set defines the pickup level for the overcurrent unit of the element in the forward direction. Then there's a reverse limit theta angle and set defines the reverse directional limit angle and the pickup level. Why do we need a broken conductor protection? Because there is a one type of the unbalanced fault is open circuit fault, which can arise from the broken conductor. With the previous uh, introduced an active sequence current, it is possible to use this element to detect the broken conductor. However, on a slightly loaded line, the negative sequence current resulting from a series of fault condition may be very close to or even less than the full load steady state imbalance arising from the CT errors or load imbalance. So make it very difficult to distinguish. So this regular negative sequence element we have seen previously IOC, TOC will not work at this low load level. So to overcome this, the device incorporate a special broken conductor protection. This broken conductor element measures the ratio of the negative sequence current to the positive sequence current. So I2 over I1, and this ratio is approximately constant with variation in load current and therefore making it more sensitive to the serial fault than the standard negative sequence protection. So have this uh, con uh, settings, we have the setup uh, levels and uh, we have the supervision mean max range for the positive sequence current, then the delay and the habit are the same as other common elements. In the logic diagram, we can see that the input negative sequence over positive sequence current ratio I2 by I1 is calculated and compared with the threshold setting. Meanwhile, the positive sequence current I1 is being supervised by the I minimum height I2. 
max then this there the inhibit and time delay timer as the regular element the output for broken conductor are bkn line one start and the trip and this uh, two operands are the same for both U.S. and U.K. English.